would totally work. Yeah, but where would you get that much chocolate to fill up? <gasps> what is it, Ada? Look! All the church decorations changed from last week. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Why? What's the problem? Pastor Donna and Pastor Pete have been gone at a conference all week. How did they get all this stuff changed? You're asking the wrong question. Victor? What are you talking about? Everyone assumes that the pastors changed the banners, oils, pyramids, and candles. But truth be told, even the pastors have no knowledge of... them. Them? The secret society that rules the supply closet with an iron fist. It is a vast, ancient order shrouded in mystery known only as... The Altar Guild. The Altar Guild? They toil for hours upon hours in the church without any encouragement, mainly because no one knows they exist. Well, apparently you do. They control the pyramids, Otto. The pyramids! <gasps> I said too much! <laughs> hmm. Secret altar guild, huh? Wanna go find them? Absolutely! All right. There must be some clues around here. What are you doing, Otto? Well, in movies, if you pull on a candlestick, it opens a secret... That was fun. We're lucky this giant pile of pyramids broke our fall. This must be the place. The secret hideout of the church altar guild. I've tried to stay calm, but this is cool. Very cool. Whoa, look at all this stuff. But where are the people? Probably working. Victor says the altar guild does an awful lot of stuff for the church. Do you think? Intruder alert. Intruder alert. Secret Cypress will lock down in one minute. We have to get out of here! Is that Leo's grappling hook launcher? It's his spare. He said I could borrow it. Hold it right there! Victor? What are you doing here? And why are you wearing that robe? Because I'm part of the Altar Guild, Otto. I'm following in the footsteps of my great aunt Marjorie. What are you two doing here? Come on, Victor. You can't tell us about your super awesome secret organization and expect us not to go looking for it. You think we're awesome? Are you kidding? You all make our church look so beautiful every week. And no one sees you do it. You're like ninja decorators. Yeah. Tell the rest of the guild to keep up the good work. Oh, wow. Thanks. Uh, I'll tell the others at our next secret meeting, time and location to be determined. That will mean a lot to them. Great. Bye, Victor. And thanks again for all that you do. Wish list? Like the presents you hope to receive? Oh, like a wish list. I wrote one of those. I asked for it. Cease your childish wish listing, for there is a prophet in your midst. A prophet? Oh no. What are you supposed to do when you meet a prophet? Do you bow or curtsy? Grovel! The answer is you grovel before your prophet! Wow! It's the Prophet Milky Eye! He's my favorite. No! It is not the Prophet Malachi from the Book of Malachi, but rather the Prophet Victor of a book yet to be named a Latin! Uh, Victor, do you have to use the megaphone? It's awfully loud. It helps to use the megaphone! Uh, when did you become a prophet? This morning! You became a prophet this morning? Who better than I to be a prophet? I'm charismatic, good-looking, and respected by all my peers. Hear my important words and obey. Okay! Everyone stand on one foot. Jump up and down. Now, pat your head and rub your tummy. No, no, no. You're, you're doing it wrong, Clara. And Monty, you're still just jumping. You didn't say Simon Says! Look, I don't think either of you know what a big deal this is. If you don't do what a prophet tells you, God will become very angry! Oh no! Hey, 
Hey, we're out of glue sticks at our table. Do you have a... Oh, what's going on? Victor just became a prophet, and Monty and I are failing to obey his will! We're going to get in so much trouble with God! Is this true, Victor? Yes. As a prophet of God, people who disobey me do so at their own peril. So, God told you to deliver a message that Clara and Monty should do whatever it is they're doing? What? Well, no, not specifically. Because that's what prophets do. They deliver God's messages, not their own. Very interesting, Adelina. Who told you to stop? But you see, the whole reason I decided to become a prophet in the first place was because- I don't think you can decide to be a prophet. God decides. So who is God going to pick? You? I don't know. Maybe. God can choose anyone. Oh, heavens. That's way, way too much pressure. Don't be absurd, Clara. Being a prophet is awesome. Actually, being a prophet is a really hard job. In the Bible, people were always mad at them for telling God's truth, and so prophets had to hide in the wilderness and eat bugs and stuff. Oh. Well, I did not sign up for anything like that. <laughs> oh, here you are, Clara, in case God picks you. Well, I can't be a prophet. I'd look terrible in a beard. It's all right, Clara. I don't think beards are actually required. Oh, good. Hey, Ada and Otto. Now that worship's done, do you want to play Arctic Kickball? Not today, Clara. Well, you can be pitcher or catcher or whatever position you want. Except for scorekeeper. I like that job since there's very little chance of the ball coming near me. <sighs> it sounds like fun, Clara, but we can't. We have to go to our grandma's house. Oh, well, that'll be fun. Not this time. Grandma fell earlier this week and broke her hip. <gasps> oh, no. I'm so sorry. Our parents say she needs help, so she's moving into an assisted living community. So we're going to pick some things up from her house to bring to her new home, and... I'm sorry. I'm usually very nervous about hugs, but you need one. Thanks, Clara. Yeah, it's really terrible, because we always have Christmas at her house, but now she won't live there, so... <sighs> Again, sorry. I promise I won't turn into a hugger. Not that there's anything wrong with huggers. It's just not really me. Um, we should go. Thank you, Clara. You're welcome. <clears throat> I'm impressed that Clara held that hug for two blocks before she let go. She is a lot stronger than she looks. It's so sad being at Grandma's house without Grandma. What do you think we should bring her? Let's look around. All right, what do we have in here? Oh, it's a bunch of cookbooks. <sighs> Grandma's banana bread is so good. I thought you didn't like bananas. I don't. That's how good the bread was. It made me forget I didn't like bananas. We should bring the cookbook. I don't think she'll be able to cook at her new home. Oh. Here's a picture of the church altar guild. Hey, there's Grandma! No way! Grandma was in the altar guild? Wow! I mean, it makes sense. She always uses a ruler when she sets the table. I'll bring it. Look, it's a whole photo album. It's got pictures of Grandma and Grandpa when they got their first car and their first house and... Who's the baby in that picture? I think it's Mom. And here's one of Grandma taking Mom to ballet and the beach and camping. These are great. We have to bring these. They'll really cheer Grandma up. You know, I thought I was only going to feel sad coming over here. But all this stuff made me feel way better. This is just like what Pastor Pete said in his sermon this week. Oh, the one about Zephaniah? Exactly. He said that even when there are bad things, we can still rejoice in the good things. Good old Zephaniah. Grandma has really done a lot of good things in her life. Yeah. I sure I'm going to miss her banana bread. You know, you could make some banana bread. Ew, bananas! And bring some for Grandma? All right, all right. For Grandma.
<laughs> Cease your joyous singing! Oh, hi, Victor! <laughs> um, Victor, are you crying? No. Are you having breathing trouble? Oh, I've never been baptized, Montgomery! And I never will be baptized, because I missed the window! Only babies are baptized. I missed one of the sacraments. One of the sacraments, Monty! There. I said it. You know now, and there's nothing I can do to take it back. Keep my shame a secret. Or tell everyone. See if I care. What's a baptism? <sighs> Secrets are wasted on you, Monty. Why do I even bother? I have a face people seem to trust. Hi, Monty. Hi, Victor. Yeah, hi, Clara. I've never been baptized, and I never will be. Why can't you get baptized? I'm nine years old, Clara. That's exactly eight years too old to feel the redeeming waters of the Lord. Are you sure? I feel like I've seen older people be baptized before. Yeah, the only way that would be possible is if this hypothetical person were a liar and dressed up like a baby, tricking the pastor, the church, and ultimately God. That's it. Thank you, Clara. You diabolical genius, you. I think you misheard me. Quickly, Pastor Pete is performing baptisms today. We must fashion an impenetrable disguise. Monty, present. You tell Pastor Pete that there's a new baby in the congregation ready to join God's family. What's a Pastor Pete? Victor, I, I think the bonnet is too big. It's an optical illusion, Clara. The bigger the bonnet is, the smaller and more baby-like I appear. The baptisms are starting. Fiona, how are you getting baptized? With water, hopefully. <laughs> she can't get baptized. She wasn't dressed up as a baby. And she's well past the prime baptism age. Oh, Mr. Stanescu must be getting baptized too. But he's ancient. He didn't even shave. No one will mistake him for a baby. Well, I told you older people can be baptized, Victor. <laughs> Name one other person. Well, Jesus for one. Uh, the Son of God does not need to be baptized, Clara. He was baptized by John the Baptist. He was about 30 years old. About 30 years old? So I can get baptized at any point in my life? Yes. Then why am I dressed like this? I still don't know. Well, this went from awesome to embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, for you. You're sitting next to a kid dressed as a baby. I'd hate to be in your shoes. I can't believe that Pastor Pete got married. That was so much fun. I can't believe that Pastor Pete and Pastor Pete's wife met at a karate conference. Oh, it's so romantic. And now we get to eat. Yes, wedding feast. Leo, are you in charge of the food? Yeah, Pastor Pete has some of us helping out. The food's not quite ready yet. Not good, not good. Fire extinguisher is in the closet, Bert. What? No, it's not a fire. I'm out of juniper berries. How am I going to make a berry reduction for the lamb? Use your head, Leo. Well, while you wait, we've been passing out juice boxes for the kids' table. Um, Leo, this is clearly not a juice box. Shh, keep your voice down, Otto. We didn't order enough juice boxes, but I don't want it to ruin the wedding. So just drink your water and let's keep the party going, all right? My own brother gives me water instead of juice? I'm supposed to have a good time without any juice? Relax, Otto. We didn't come for the juice. We came to see Pastor Pete get married and see our church family grow. You make a good point, Ada. You want to trade your juice for my water? Let's not be ridiculous. Well, this is quite the embarrassment for the newlyweds. And completely unfair. I love my juice. Uh, that's water. Oh, I thought it was just clear flavored. I am so sorry that I got juice and some of you didn't. How can I enjoy it now? It's all right, Clara. Why must some have so much while others so little? You know what we need? We need a miracle. A miracle? Yes, to turn the water into juice, like Jesus did when he went to a wedding. Jesus changed water into wine. Then this should be even easier. Juice is probably way simpler. Otto's right. I bet changing water into juice is a snap. The wedding is saved. 
I'll get cups for all the juice water. Yep, so let's get this miracle train rolling. Who wants to do it? I wouldn't want to do a miracle wrong my first time. I'd be so embarrassed. I'm not sure any of us are up to performing an actual miracle. Look! One giant cup! It's a miracle! Monty, can't you see we're in a crisis here? Wait, Monty, that's a great idea! See, if we put it all together, there should be plenty for all of us. <gasps> Another miracle! It's really not. Jesus changed water into wine, whereas we put some juice in a bowl. Oh, but this should work! I don't usually drink my whole juice box anyway. Exactly! Well, I guess it's better than no juice at all. Thanks, Ada. Let us enjoy this plentiful juice. We probably need some cups. Right. The community care packages the church is putting together are missing just one thing. Monkey costumes. Nope. Trail mix. A lot of trail mix. I've got the granola. Here's the peanut-free nuts. Dried fruit. And, of course, sausage. Made by my great-aunt Marjorie herself. What? Sausage is the perfect addition to this trail mix. Uh, not really, Victor. Um, trail mix usually has less meat and more trail mix. Ugh, even I'm disgusted. Oh, I see how it is. You're all against me. Ah, if only this trail mix team was made up of six victors instead of one victor and five non-victors trying to hold Victor back. Ah. Ouch. Victor, wake up. We're going to vote. Huh? Who, who said that? All in favor of using Great Aunt Marjorie's 10 meat trail mix? Aye! Motion passes. 10 meat trail mix for everyone! I... I don't know where I am, but... I think I'm gonna like it here. Bad news, everyone. The trail mix has gone missing. Missing? Yes, we may never know where that delectable trail mix ended up. <laughs> ah! Sweet, meaty trail mix! What the? <laughs> Come back here! <gasps> In the beginning, there was Victor. Victor began Victor. Victor began Victor. And Victor began Victor. Victor began Victor. He began a whole bunch of Victor. Ah! Oh boy. Ah. Huh? Ah. Ah. Oh, tapioca! <laughs> oh, I got you great, Victor. Oh, you should have seen your face. <laughs> Right? Otto, Clara, Ada, Jax, Montgomery. I'm so happy to see all of you. Happy? We should get him to a doctor. That bump might be serious. No, 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 no. I'm just glad we're all so different. Or to put a finer point on it, I am relieved that there is only one of me. Us too, Victor. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Ada's been in Pastor Donna's office for a while. Did she say what she wanted to see Ada about? No, it's a mystery. Oh, what if it's bad news? Oh, what if it's bad news about me? Why would Pastor Donna give bad news about you to Ada? Well, because she knows I wouldn't take bad news very well. Ada's the perfect person to tell me. Wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. What was it, Ada? Give it to me straight. Am I going to be all right? Um, yes, Clara. So what did Pastor Donna want? She wants me to speak on Jeremiah Sunday. 
The one time a year a single kid is picked to do a presentation all on their own about Jeremiah. I wonder if other churches have Jeremiah Sunday. When I asked what I should say about the prophet Jeremiah, she said she knows I can do it. Wow, that's actually kind of vague. You're really young for something like this, Ada. Yes. Yes, I am. Oh, it must be a huge amount of pressure. I know. Like the kind of pressure you'd feel if an elephant was sitting on your shoulders and... Uh... Is that what I look like when I panic? You wave your arms more. Do you think she's out here? She has to be. We've looked everywhere else. Ah! Get back! It might be a badger! Come on, Clara. I've never seen a badger out here. If anything, it'd be a rabbit. <coughs> yep, she definitely waves her arms more. Ada! We found you! I'm not coming back until Jeremiah Sunday blows over. Why? It's way too much! Look at all these books! Where did you get them all? Well, while I was panicking, I ran to the library. <coughs> and did some research on Jeremiah and checked out some books. Just to be sure the project was huge and hopeless. Wow, you did all that while panicking? Yeah, usually I'm pretty good under pressure, but I am not the right person for this. Pastor Donna picked the wrong kid. It sounds pretty overwhelming. Pastor Donna is calling on me just like God called on Jeremiah. I'm going to be miserable and try not to do it, and then she'll say, Yep, just like Jeremiah. Jeremiah didn't want to be a prophet? No, he tried to run and hide and hold his tongue. But in the end, he couldn't help it. God had called him, and that was that. So, Jeremiah actually ended up doing what God wanted? Well, yeah. God knew Jeremiah could do it. But I'm not so sure I can. But you just did. I did? Hey, that's right. I didn't know anything about Jeremiah, and now I do. All because you couldn't help but do what Pastor Donna already knew you could do. Wow, it's kind of freaky how well she knows you. Huh. Um, can we go now, please? There's a squirrel that's been staring at me for a while up here. I tell you, Montgomery, there is nothing better than a little fishing on a Sunday afternoon. The boat, the comb, the thrill of the catch, I love it all. I made a sailor's knot. That's just another tangled rope, Monty. Oh, I'm going to start calling it the Monty Knot. <laughs> you never fail to turn life's lemons into lemonade, Montgomery. Now, before you tangle another piece of rope, we should check how the bait is doing. Drat! The bait was taken again! Right out from under our noses. Do we have noses? Never mind that, Monty. Reload the lines. Ah, excellent. Nothing can resist sweet, sweet cotton candy. Ready to launch. Cast. Do you think cats ever dream that they're dogs? I've got something. <gasps> Monty, quick, get the net! I've got something! Oh, oh, it's a fighter! But I've got it! Mm. It's a... It's a... It's a... Oh, Clara! It's Clara! Monty, quick, get the net! Ah, what's happening? Is this an alien abduction? Ha-ha! <laughs> we caught you, Clara! Victor? Monty, what... What are you doing? We're being like Jesus. Really? Uh, how? Oh, it's simple, Clara. Jesus said that his disciples would be fishers of people. So we are spending the day fishing for people. I'm confident this is what Jesus would want. So what do you do now that you caught me? That, that is an excellent question. Honestly, I just enjoyed the idea of catching people in nets. I hadn't thought about it much past that. Well, I for one am having a great time. Thank you, Fiona. I don't remember Jesus and the disciples actually using fishing poles or nets on people. No, no, I suppose they didn't. But how would we get you in the boat without poles and nets? Are you kidding? It's a boat in a tree! And you have cotton candy up here! How could you keep us away? She makes a good point, Montgomery. Especially about the candy clouds we have. 
I think that's how Jesus and the disciples did it, too. What, give out cotton candy? No, they invited people to join them by sharing about the kingdom of God. Huh, that might actually work. <clears throat> Attention, nearby children! We invite you to come and join us in our tree boat. We have cotton candy and a wonderful view. Cool, look, a sky boat! Wow, you were right, Clarabella. Huh, sometimes being invited is the greatest net of all. Hmm, she's a little small. Should we throw her back? Ooh, candy. Hey, that minnow just stole our candy clouds. <laughs> if I was king of the sea, the sea, I'd fly planes every day. I would fly people from Chicago to Cabo to Atlanta to Maine. And all at a reasonable rate. Oh, if I was king of the sea, the sea, feedly deedly do. If I was king of the sea, the sea, I'd probably need a crew. Oh, if I was king of the sea, the sea, I'd fly planes every day. I would fly people from Chicago to Cabo to Atlanta to Maine, and all at a reasonable rate.